Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today we have another episode of my board game collection, Shelf by Shelf. And today I'll be covering shelf number seven. We've already done the first six shelves on the series. Let's go straight to shelf number seven. And first of all, on shelf number seven, we have this game here, blocking those in behind, and that would be Libertalia, designed by Paolo Mori. And this is a pirate themed game with character or role selection and very akin to games like Citadels and Mission Red Planet. However, in this game, you have tons of characters. You have 30 characters. This game is a very simple, light game. It's a set collection game, really. You're trying to collect different sets of tokens that represent the different booty in the ships that you're looting. And uh, basically, you go through six days. You go through a seventh day. Uh, it's a week, but the six days are the six days of looting. The seventh day is a rest day. And um, the players are playing the different character cards. And the different character cards give them different benefits, hurt their opponents in different ways. But also, it determines priority and order as far as looting the ship, right? Who will get to loot the ship first? Because there's always tokens equal to the amount of players on each um, uh, section of the ship corresponding to the different days. So you're only going to get one token per player. So priority is very important. And you're probably not going to have priority in every single uh, day. So you're going to pick and choose wisely according to what booty is there. But you're not only looking for what is the most valuable booty. You're also looking for what's the most detrimental. Because some of the booty is really just... Um, Curse tokens, bad things that can happen to you and hurt you as a player that you might want to avoid. So perhaps you don't even care so much about getting the best treasure on one day if it means that in return you're also going to get some cursed treasure on the following day. So budgeting your cards and mapping it out is all really cool. And what's interesting is that the first round, every player has the same amount, uh, the same exact character cards the role cards to choose from but as the game progresses you're only going to keep the ones that you have not used and you're going to draft a few more so players are always going to have a little bit of overlap as to what cards they share uh but there's also going to differ as the game progresses because based on what they did not choose in the earlier rounds by the time they get to the third round they're going to have a radically different hand of cards to choose from than the other opponents it's a fun game it's neat nothing to you know rock your world necessarily or um, you know, leave your mind blown, but you know, it's a fun, light family, me medium, well, medium to lightweight Euro game with a really cool pirate theme and some great art. And tell me that that does not look like Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean. All right. So that's Libertalia. Now let's look back here and we have Merchants of Amsterdam, a game that I've talked about in this channel, but nobody else talks about it. This is a game designed by Rainer Knizia, and it's an auction bidding game. Go figure. But in this game, each player takes on the role of a merchant. Go figure. Um, of Amsterdam. Um, and you're trying to build different uh, trade offices throughout the four sectors of the Earth, right? you got the New World, and you got um, Asia, and the East Indies. you got all these different sections, and you're trying to build trade houses, but you're also trying to um, build warehouses in the city of Amsterdam and you're also trying to advance your influence in different shipping tracks right so there's three different areas in which players are vying for control and majority area majority and each of those areas is broken down further into four different sectors so there's a lot of you know contending for all these spots and also speculating as to which spots will be more most worthwhile or or more um valuable as the game progresses because uh you know there's gonna be various scoring rounds throughout the game and in each scoring round you're gonna check who's the majority in each of these areas you're gonna check who's the secondary and both both those players are gonna cash out and get some money in return and your money is not only very influential for the auctions that go on in this game but they're also your victory points at the end of the game. Now, the auction is cool. It's neat. You've got this nice little um, Dutch, um, Dutch auction timer or clock, which players are going to try to be the first person to smash it and pay the corresponding price. But that's not the coolest mechanism in this game. The coolest mechanism in this game is at the beginning of each turn, players are going to draw three cards one at a time and make their decisions one at a time as to whether or not they want to acquire that card for themselves, place it up for auction, an auction in which they can participate, or discard it. And because you're making decisions, decisions as one, once at a time, there is a lot of push your luck because you end up passing on a card hoping that there's something better and you find out that there's nothing better. Or you end up snatching up a card 
thinking that there might not be anything better and of course then there's something better and that could be very frustrating really cool mechanism i've seen games like herbaceous borrow it but not do it the justice that merchants of amsterdam has done it terrible awful component quality and this game is out of print but if it sounds interesting to you i do have a review of this game on the channel which you could check a little bit of as to how it plays and my opinions on the game so that's merchants of amsterdam then we have some pandemic stuff here so first of all i got my pandemic stuff which i keep in these two boxes which is the base box pandemic and the on the brink box of pandemic i basically keep my stuff here which includes the base game the on the brink expansion but it also includes the in the lab expansion right i've uh, consolidated and put all these all this content within these two boxes and i just really love this game system lots of people do this is a very popular game there's a reason why it sells very well it's kind of like a mass market hit nowadays but it's a great cooperative game with so much different levels and you can never get bored because there's so much content you know um perhaps if you just have the base game alone i could see as as to how you could get bored with it but with the expansions there's so many amazing modules that you can mix and match you can add them to each other and really make for a really complex and challenging game or you can just separate them and i like every module in these expansions even the um bioterrorist module which a lot of people are not fans of i have personally have had a good time playing that but you could also play solo there's a solo module here there's a team versus team module here a lot of really cool neat things the in the lab expansion and its module adds a additional board and another side game going on within the game that really adds a twist of complexity and again makes it for a very challenging game love this game pandemic and then right next to pandemic or pandemics we got oh my gosh the other pandemic here which is pandemic the cure which has been my favorite recently and this is basically a dice version of pandemic where players are rolling their dice and the dice not only determine the infections that take place around the world but each player or each character has their own customized color-coded car uh, dice that determine their actions and this makes for an even more asymmetric game than Pandemic, right? Because the way Pandemic works is that each player has a character that allows them to cheat or break or twist one of the rules, which is really cool, really neat. But here, not only do you get that additional, you know, rule-breaking power, but you also have your customized dice that have different actions, although there is lots of overlap, it has different actions than the other characters. So there's no way your turn is going to be exactly alike because there's going to be some sides of your die that the other players don't have. One player might be more likely to be able to collect specimens or, or, or samples to cure. Other players may be more likely to treat and uh, diseases. Other players are more likely to travel. It's really, really cool. Love how the customized dice work in this game for asymm asymmetry. And also, I just find that it's it's much more challenging because of the randomness factor. You can't control the roll of the die, right? The luck of the roll. So that does make it for a more challenging, more frustrating, but also quicker game. Because if this was just as long as Pandemic or longer with that same sort of randomness and luck factor and chaos it probably wouldn't rank as highly as it does to me. So that's Pandemic the Cure. And finally, the last game that we have here is Sagrada. And this is a very popular gateway game where players are rolling these dice and trying to complete their Sagrada grid. And each of the grids has a card underneath it, which has some prerequisites, specific colors and or numbers that players must place on those spots. So you have to meet those challenges. And then you have a bunch of free spaces that you can choose accordingly. And this is a dice drafting game where players are rolling their dice and then drafting them. And based on their draft, placing them in an illegal spot. Adjacency is a very important rule. Diagonal adjacency counts, at least for placement. And you also have these tool cards that help you. They give you special one-time abilities if you pay the right dice for it. And you also have these goal cards that score you points and some of these are communal goals that every player is aware of but some of them are private or player independent goals that nobody else knows about and you can gain bonus points by meeting the demands of these scoring bonus cards really cool beautiful game the dice are amazing they're gorgeous the sagrada boards are beautiful um it's just an amazing fun game very very light don't get me wrong but it's a fun dice drafting abstracted game, uh, especially for um, families, children, 
or even people who are new to gaming, but at the same time, with just enough bite to keep uh, some gamers, at least, in my case, me, satisfied. And that's it, folks. That was Board Game Shelf number seven. Thank you so much for joining me here at When Harry Met Board Games. Continue to follow this uh, my board game collection series as I will continue recording these videos for you comment down below Tell me what you think about the games for today. Which ones have you played? Which ones have you not played? Which ones are you surprised that I own? All right Well, this is Harry from when Harry met board games saying take care everybody stay safe stay healthy and have fun gaming. Bye. Bye